Here is everything you need to know about battleships, battle cruisers, and battle monitors in Azure Lane, 2021 edition. Disclaimer: If you're a veteran, you might have already know most of the stuff in this video, but please watch on. You might find some useful information, and most of this I'm basing it on PVE instead of PVP. Just saying. Okay, so battleships. They have really cool barrages, they deal a butt ton of damage when used with the right equipments. Most of the faction leaders are indeed battleships, and most of them you will use are as flagships, as in the middle position of the fleet, to maximize their skill or barrages. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start by looking into how to acquire them. You can build them in the heavy construction pool along with light cruisers and heavy cruisers. Now, the battleships that are available to you in the heavy construction pool and that you will want to use are Pray to RNG before you build, Hood, Duke of York, Prince of Wales, Mikasa, Warspite, and Nagato. Also, John Bart. Not to say that the rest are bad, just that these are the few most useful ones. And here's why. Okay, we'll be going through them one by one, starting with Hood. Hood has a sour base barrage that deals normal shelling damage and she increases your backline's reload by 40% upon activation. What's a sour base barrage you said? We'll get to that. Next up, we have Warspite. Warspite has a retrofit, meaning she can become even stronger by upgrading her retrofit tree. And also, you can exchange her exclusive retrofit item, the Warrior's Prowess, in the prototype shop with specialized cores. You don't need to purposely grind for those cores, you acquire them as you progress through the game. Back to Warspite. She has a super good time based barrage that always crits and aims for the furthest enemy away from her, and is upgraded upon retrofit. Please note that she is quite expensive to retrofit, so make sure to spend your gold wisely. What's the time based barrage you said? We'll get to that. Next up we have Duke of York. Similar to Warspite, she has a time based barrage that aims for the target furthest away from her, but does not crit instead slows the move speed of the unit that was hit. Her second skill boosts her first main gun Sawo's damage by a good 50%, and enemies that are hit takes 12% more damage from her. TLDR, she's a good nuke. Next up, we have Prince of Wales. She's the sister of Duke of York, but doesn't have a barrage. Instead, she is an insanely good ship when used as a flagship for the Eagle Union. Her skill, Royal Alliance, allows her to gain 10% bonus firepower, accuracy, evasion, and anti-air when used alongside with Eagle Union ships for up to 3 stacks, or a maximum of 30%. And if the fleet that Wales is in contains 3 or more Eagle Union ships, the reload time of her first gun salvo is reduced by 85%. She also provides your Eagle Union Vanguard with a 12% bonus firepower and anti-air stat boost while also providing a 12% ABI and NTA stat boost for your Eagle Union carriers. So if you plan to run a Eagle Union fleet, Prince of Wales is a must-have. You can utilize her skill fairly easily with the likes of Saratoga, Enterprise, SX, and Shangri-La. All of them are available to you in the special construction. As for the vanguards, Laffy, Portland, Sandy, and Helena, all of which are easy to obtain and can be retrofitted. Moving on, we have the pseudo IJN flagship Mikasa. Now, the reason I say pseudo is because the supposed main flagship for the IJN is Nagato. We'll get to her next. But if you already have Nagato, you can skip to that part of the video. Her skill, Reborn Combined Fleet Flagship, provides her IJN companions with a 20% firepower and reload boost. Very straightforward. Okay, here's the main flagship of the Sakura Empire, Nagato. She's the newest addition to the permanent pool and it's highly recommended that you get her as soon as possible. Her first skill, 4th Combined Fleet Flagship, provides all IJN ships with a 10% bonus firepower, 20% bonus accuracy, and reload boost. And also makes it so that your Sakura Empire aircraft carriers deal 20% more damage. Do note that the buff does not apply to aviation battleships like Issei and Hyuga. Her second skill, Big 7 Sakura, allows her to have a 40% chance to perform a high damage, high explosive barrage that essentially clears your whole screen like you saw in the beginning of this video. 
which is a must have for any IJN fleet and is a direct upgrade from her predecessor, Mikasa. Ideally, it's a good idea to pair Nagato up with the 1st carrier division or the 5th carrier division. The now popular combo of Shokaku and Shinano, or Shokaku and Taiho, if you have access to them, are solid choices here as well. Akagi and Kaga, the 1st carrier division, is available to you in the infamous Fox Mine at stage 3-4 in the main campaign. It took me around 3 months to get them, both of them, so good luck farming them. While Shokaku, Zuikaku, and Taiho are available to you in the special construction pool. Last and certainly not least is Jan Bart. She had only been recently added to the permanent pool just before Nagato, and unlike most battleships, she has a preload, meaning she can fire her salvo as soon as the battle begins, making her a very efficient battleship for grinding. She's also a new girl like Duke of York, but only more ridiculous. You'll see why. Her first skill, Pirate's Soul, increases the damage of her first volley of every salvo by a whopping 60%. And along with the usual 20% damage boost you get by firing manually, she gains an additional 60% damage bonus, meaning you get a total of 80% damage bonus from firing manually. That's not all. Her second skill, Final Shot, activates when you equip the quadruple 380mm main gun aka the John Bader gun, when equipped, it increases her main gun's crit rate by 30% and crit damage by an additional 50%. She is the very definition of a nuker. The only drawback is acquiring the John Bader gun. You can get the gun in the core data shop for 800 core data, or by farming the D3 stage of the Iris of Light and Dark event in the War Archives. Another thing to mention is that you can potentially get Duke of York, Suikaku, North Carolina, and Prince of Wales in the D3 stage or the SP3 stage for Wales of their respective events in the War Archives, but the chances of them dropping are very very small, speaking from experience, so try at your own risk. Link is in the description for the list of other battleships available to you in the construction pool. Now before we go ahead and talk about the equipments you should use on your battleships, we'll have to separate them into two categories. First being salvo based barrage battleships and time based barrage battleships. Salvo based barrage battleships refers to battleships whose barrage activates when you launch your salvos. Thus, faster guns means more barrage. Few examples include Hood, Nagato, Monarch, and Amagi. Second is the time based barrage battleship. It refers to battleship whose barrage activates in intervals. Ships such as Warspite, Duke of York, Alabama, and Washington all fall under this category. For these ships, you can equip them with higher caliber guns to maximize their damage output. Okay, so there are two types of gun ammo you need to know about. First being the HE or high explosive shells. On the right, you'll see the damage modifier applied when used against a specific armor type. HE ammo deals the most damage to light armored units such as destroyers and most light cruisers. HE shells also has a 50% chance of igniting enemy units, dealing burn damage over time. AP shells on the other hand, or armor piercing shells, travels the fastest amongst all shell types and are effective against medium or heavy armored units. All armor piercing shells have a 20-25% to chance to inflict armor break and enemies that are affected by armor break takes 8% more damage from shelling attacks. For the salvo based barrage battleships, two of the best HE choices are the prototype 406 main gun mount and the twin 381mm advanced main gun mount. The 406 deals more damage per salvo but shoots just a bit slower than the 381 but you shouldn't really mind the small difference in the reload time as the damage it deals compensate for the slower reload, therefore it would be a better choice compared to the 381. Both guns are very accessible through the PR research, just that the 406 is only available in the PR2, while the 381 can be accessed through any of the PR research. On the other hand, two of the best AP choices for salvo based barrage battleships are the twin 380mm SKC 34 main gun mount, and the twin 406 MK8 main gun mount. 
The reason for the 380 being one of the best is the same as the 381 Heshi gun being it's easy to get, has a short reload time and decent damage. Now if you prefer more damage but slower reload just by a second and a half, you can go for the 406 which is available to you in the gear lab in the Eagle Union section. However, you need to be at level 60 to take on Operation Siren and gather the materials needed to craft the gun. It is currently the second best fast firing AP gun in the game, first being the Rainbow Georgia gun in the PR2 research. Okay, now for the time based barrage battleships. For HE ammo, I will first recommend the 44406 for the beginners and then get the prototype 33381 in the PR research afterwards. With great damage and good reload, the 381 is currently the best HE gun that you can get and is super accessible for a top tier gun. And even though the 406 is a purple gear, make no mistake, that doesn't mean it's bad by any means. It's highly accessible and you can get it by farming stage 62 and 63 in the campaign or by opening T3 or T4 Eagle Union boxes. For armor piercing ammo, two of the best choice would be the Triple 406 AP Circumflex Gun, aka the Champagne Gun, and the Triple 410 Main Gun. You can get the Champagne Gun through PR3 Research, and it is currently the second best AP gun in game. Again, first being the Rainbow Georgia Gun. On the armor modifier side, it deals more damage to medium and heavy armor compared to the standard AP shells. There are a few other types of AP shells, I'm not gonna talk about them here, you can check them out in the link in the description below. For the beginners, you can go for the 410 main gun. It has good damage and a nice reload, you can get it easily through PR1 research. Okay, let's talk about secondary guns. For ships that are able to equip either CL or DD guns, CL guns are usually your go-to choices because they provide bonus firepower and are very efficient at killing suicide boats. If you're using Eagle Union ships such as Washington or South Dakota, DD guns are your only choice, so you can go ahead and get the twin 127mm. It is farmable in a lot of stages and it's available to you in the Eagle Union tech box. When it comes to anti-air guns, there are really only two guns that you will want to consider putting on your battleships. The first being the twin 40mm Bofors stack, the second being the Bofors haze mayor. The stack provides an additional 10 hit stats while the haze mayor shoots a bit slower than the stack and only gives additional 5 hit stats. Now, the reason you want to be using them is because it makes your battleship shoot more accurately due to the hit stats. For auxiliaries, beginners, you can go for the Type 91 armor piercing shell along with the fire control radar. Both are purple gear and they both provide firepower and hit stats. The Type 91 AP shell increases your main gun's crit damage by 15% and is available in the T3 and T4 Sakura tech boxes. Well, you can get the purple fire control radar through opening any of the T3 or T4 tech boxes, regardless of what faction box you open. As you progress through the game, you can get better auxiliary choices such as the Type 1 armor piercing shell and the super heavy shell. You can get them by exchanging 800 data cores each in the core data shop. The Type 1 shell is a direct upgrade from the Type 91, providing more firepower and hit stats while also increasing your main gun's crit damage by 25% instead of the 15%. The Super Heavy Shell provides your ship with high firepower stats and it increases your ship's main gun crit rate by 8%. Last but not least, we have the High Standard Fire Control Radar. As the name suggests, it's a direct upgrade from the usual fire control radar, giving you more firepower and hit stats. It also reduces your first gun salvo cooldown by 15%, Therefore, you can use it to speed adjust your guns. You can get the blueprints through PR3 research. To end things off, here's a clip of my wall spite showcasing her damage against Arc Royal Meta. Yeah. 
And that's about it for this battleship guide. I'm currently working on the carrier and light carrier version of this, so stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed and found this video helpful. Please leave a like and subscribe for future videos and I'll see you guys in the next video.